in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you some of the best celestial objects to observe with the Celestron Nexstar 127 SLT. So, if you are considering getting this telescope, or perhaps you've recently got it and are wondering what is in store for you, then this video is for you. Now, I do want to quickly begin by mentioning what this telescope is designed for and what it is truly capable of. Firstly, it is a computerized telescope, first and foremost. You can see here, this is where we can turn it on, and here is the hand control panel. Now, essentially, what this means is that you can locate and track objects as they appear to move across the sky via that included hand control panel. Now, you do need to go through a process of polar alignment, and I do have another video on my channel which walks you through it step by step, so I do suggest you check that out uh, if you wonder what that process is all about, or you do need to, to do it. But this is essentially a process that you need to go through to ensure that the telescope accurately navigates the sky. In terms of the hand control panel, there is an extensive database of different objects which you can select and therefore go ahead and observe. It is easy enough to use as well, it's a simple uh, tool. As part of that alignment process, you enter your location and the time to help you identify objects that are visible at the time of your viewing session. Now, when you get the telescope, you also get access to starry night software, which will help you learn about the night sky, celestial objects, and how to plan your next observing session. Now onto the optics, that's really, really important. This is a five inch Maxitov Cassegrain, which essentially means it has a lens and a mirror. Because of this, this telescope does not require frequent collimation like a Schmidt Cassegrain. Also, the secondary spot is significantly smaller than a traditional Schmidt Cassegrain secondary mirror, giving this high contrast views. Okay, so that's really important. Now, its highest useful magnification is 300 times, and its light gathering power is 329 times. You get two eyepieces, a 25 millimeter, which is in there at the moment, and a 10 mil uh, sorry, a nine millimeter. That's here, you can see that here. both of which allow you to observe slightly differently. The 25mm will give you a wider field of view or more of the night sky at once, and the 9mm will give you the magnification. Now, here's what's important to remember before I walk you through each celestial object, my favourite things to observe. This telescope is designed primarily for observing the moon, solar system, and the brightest deep sky objects. Now, the former, so the solar system and the moon, is where the telescope's power truly lie. So I just wanted to quickly mention that because it's important that you set your expectations up front. <clears throat> so now onto the objects. Number one, as I've just mentioned, the moon. You can get some mesmerizing clear views with this telescope. You can study individual craters and the impact rings. Now it's particularly great during the crescent phases. Number two, my favorite, is Venus which appears relatively large and bright through this telescope. Then there is Jupiter, and this telescope really excels with Jupiter. The cloud bands are absolutely amazing, and I'd recommend that you try and observe them if you ever proceed to get this telescope, or you have one. Saturn, which is great to first identify with the 25mm and then move on to the 9mm when you have it centred. The rings are clear, the Cassini division is observable, somewhat faintly, you can even see some of the dark bands in the Northern Hemisphere as well. Now, at number five, there is Mars. So while you can see it, bear in mind it is small. You will likely need a higher magnification eyepiece, not included. So a higher magnification from 9mm, so you want to go less than that. And that will require an upgrade and a little bit of additional expense but that will help you truly explore it. At number six, 
the brighter deep sky objects like galaxies, nebula and star clusters. So the bright stars that I like to observe in particular are Altair, Vega and Capella in the constellations of Aquila, Lyra and Auriga. And the other um, Abel, IC, Caldwell, Messier and NGC and SAO catalogues are all in the database as well. So you can basically explore those to see more of the deepest, uh, the brightest stars. So lastly, I want to give you some tips for using this telescope. I kind of mentioned this one earlier. Firstly, you want to start with a 25 millimeter and then move on to the nine millimeter accordingly. This will help you to identify objects and then that will give you that enhanced magnification that you're probably looking for. Now this telescope is somewhat undermounted, so it helps to keep the legs a little shorter uh, than at full length. Um, that will give you uh, increased stability, so that's the tripod I'm referring to. Try not to hop around the sky. It's really easy to do this with a computerized uh, telescope and mount, because you can. Instead, spend time with each object, soaking it, soaking it in until it gives everything uh, that you were hoping to observe. Also, and I've mentioned this previously in the video, invest in a few extra accessories. A three times Barlow lens, upgraded eyepieces, and a rechargeable power supply would be my suggestion. So by default, you have to essentially add eight AA batteries in here, but you can get, can get a rechargeable uh, battery source and that will help too. So they are the best things to observe with the Celestron Nexstar 127 SLT. Hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. With that said, best of luck with observing the night sky.